Hello, my name is Dr. Jacob Hudis, and welcome to this short video where I will demonstrate how Heisenberg's matrix mechanics and Schrodinger's wave mechanics are not only conceptually equivalent, but they represent the same underlying physics and mathematics. Oh my! Both formulations explain quantum mechanics through non-commuting observables and uncertainty relations. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in physics and math related content, quantum mechanics, and AP college physics problem solving. In quantum mechanics, a Hamiltonian represents the total energy of the system, and it's often composed of operators that do not commute with each other. This non-commutivity is crucial because it reflects the idea that corresponding physical observables, such as position and momentum, cannot be simultaneously measured with absolute precision, giving rise to the uncertainty principle. On the left side, there are two matrices A and B. Both of these matrices are Hermitian. Hermitian operators have real eigenvalues, and their eigenvectors form a complete basis for the Hilbert space. For matrix A, the eigenvalues are plus 1 and minus 1, and the eigenvectors of A are V1 and V2. Matrix B, which is also Hermitian, has eigenvalues of plus 1 and minus 1, and it has eigenvectors w1 and w2. So b onto w1 equals plus 1 onto w1, and b onto w2 equals minus 1 onto w2. acephysics.org! Yes! Math yes, and yes. physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. The matrices A and B do not commute, which is shown by the fact that the commutator is not equal to zero. This non-commutivity tells us that A and B represent incompatible measurements, much like a quantum mechanical measurement of spin along different axes. Now moving to the right side, we look at two different operators, differential operators. Here we see the position operator x and the momentum operator minus i h bar d by dx. Terrific! The position operator is just a multiplication by x while the momentum operator is a derivative. These operators have different eigenfunctions. The eigenfunction of x is the Dirac delta function, and the eigenfunction of the momentum operator is this complex exponential or plane wave solution. The Dirac delta function is a function which localizes the particle at position x0, and the eigenfunction of the momentum operator is a plane wave which describes a particle with momentum p. Just like the matrices, these differential operators do not commute. Amazing. The commutator of x with p is equal to i h bar. This shows that position and momentum are non-commuting observable, meaning that we can't know both with arbitrary precision at the same time. This is the mathematical foundation of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The fact that these operators have different eigenfunctions further reinforces their incompatibility. Measuring one observable precisely disturbs the other. In quantum mechanics, this non-commutivity between operators underlies much of the uncertainty and probabilistic nature of the theory. Hamiltonians in quantum mechanics consist of non-commuting operators that don't share the same basis. For example, if I take a linear combination of matrix A from the previous slide and matrix B, this matrix could represent a Hamiltonian, and this Hamiltonian is made up of a linear combination of two Hermitian matrices that don't commute. This matrix has eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2, and has eigenvectors E1 and E2. Now let's imagine I make a measurement on the system. And if I want to make a measurement of the eigenstate of matrix A, which is just this matrix, for example, spin along the z-direction, it's not an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. This means that a measurement of A necessarily places the system into a superposition of two energy eigenstates in a linear combination. If I place the quantum system in this in this state, then it's necessarily in a linear combination of the two energy states. As a result, after measuring the eigenstate of A, the system exists in the distribution of possible energies. Similarly, when you measure the eigenstate of matrix B, for example, spin along the x-axis, the system is also placed in a linear combination of energy eigenstates, but it's in a different combination than the combination with A. This illustrates how different measurements lead to distinct superposition of energy eigenstates, reflecting the non-commuting nature of these operators. So on this slide, I have a Hamiltonian, which is made up of a linear combination of the momentum operator and the position operator. And this is a Hermitian operator, and the position is a Hermitian operator. And the fact that these are squared, that doesn't change anything. Any Hermitian operator squared is still a Hermitian operator. The point is, this Hamiltonian is made up of a combination of Hermitian operators that don't commute with each other. This is the Hamiltonian, and so this Hamiltonian has eigenvectors, 
and eigenvalues. These are the eigenvectors, and these are the eigenvalues. I'm not going to get into the details of these eigenfunctions, but these eigenfunctions have the Hermite polynomials. This is something you may have heard of if you studied quantum mechanics. But ultimately, there's an infinite number of eigenfunctions, and there's an infinite number of eigenvalues, and the Hamiltonian is made up of a combination of Hermitian operators that don't commute. In the same way, on this slide, this Hamiltonian was made up of a linear combination of Hermitian operators that don't commute, and this had two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. Here, we have an infinite number of eigenfunctions and an infinite number of eigenvalues, but it's exactly the same idea and it's exactly the same concept. I could measure an eigenstate of x. So this is the position operator, which is a Hermitian operator, and the eigenstate of x is the delta function of x minus x naught. If you measure an eigenstate of x and you put the system into one position eigenstate, that's necessarily in some linear combination of all these energy eigenstates, where cx e of n, these are the coefficients that represent how much of each one of these eigenstates is in the delta function. Similarly, if I wanted to measure an eigenstate of p, this is the momentum operator. The eigenstate of p is this momentum plane wave. It has one constant momentum. If you put the system in one constant momentum, that would put it in a linear combination of all of these energy eigenstates with different coefficients in front of each one of these eigenstates. So this cx of en and this cp of en, these are different numbers. Just like in this problem, if you made a measurement and you put the system in this state, it would be a linear combination of E1 and E2. Or if you put the system in this state, it would be a linear combination of E1 and E2. These coefficients are different from these coefficients. In the same way, these coefficients are different from these coefficients, but it's exactly the same idea. I just wrote down the coefficient CPEN. These are relatively complicated. And so I just want to show you the key idea, the matrix mechanics and wave mechanics are exactly the same thing, and they still involve the, the uncertainty principle, and it just comes down to linear combinations of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, where the Hamiltonian is made out of combinations of different Hermitian operators that don't commute with each other. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis.